Good morning, my fellow figsters. It is uh, the 27th of May, I think. Uh, this is going to be one of the most difficult videos I've made because I'm really, really winging this one. But I wing them all, okay? They're not prepared, they're not rehearsed. But for some reason, I just feel less organized today, shall we say. I just got back from vacation. And I want to try to make this as quick as I can, this introductory. Okay, so this is a follow-up video on an earlier video, this, which was uh, titled Fig Busters, where I, was, where I explained I was going to leave my fig trees unprotected for the winter. Now, the reasons why I had to do that are numerous. Some of the reasons were very important, and so I just couldn't get to it. Simple as that. Ordinarily, I would never allow that to occur. But since I had to, I was forced to, I thought that I would use it as an opportunity and an experiment so that we could put to rest this notion of, you know, this fig tree is more uh, winter hardy than that tree, and look at my tree, it's more hardy than all. You know, there's truth and there's fiction in all of this. And my job is to try to discern and to represent what the truth is in these matters. And so that's what we're talking about when we're talking about my fig busters series, which I hope to run into perpetuity after this video as well. I don't know how many, but there's a number of things I want to try to dispel, you know, things, misrepresentations, so on and so forth. Uh, according to my opinion, of course, everyone is entitled to their own opinion, and I don't dispute that. Okay, it's incontrovertible that everyone has an opinion, and it's okay, you have that right. Everyone has that right, but a good fixture will look at all of the evidence and assimilate that evidence, okay, and then try to make a sound judgment on really what is true. Try to distinguish what is true and what is false, or what is in probability what is true, most probably true as opposed to false. Anyway, I don't want to get off on a tangent here, but I want to get moving. <clears throat> um, so what I'm going to do is show you now what the damage is and going referring back to the title uh, I did that a little bit in fun but I also um, am serious about the title because it's not easy to sustain uh, that much winter uh, damage winter dieback and make and have a good time when you're looking at it and experiencing it as I am now experiencing it so um, I hope that I'm able to present you with some valuable information about unprotected figs in 7A. You will also be able to see the variation in dieback between the microclimates, okay? The microclimates being uh, up against a house in a southern location, uh, protected from the northwest dominant cold winter winds, uh, as opposed to being out near the field where there's no wind breaks and there's just wind and wind and cold all winter long, you're going to be see the differences in different varieties, in, including the Mount Etna types. Uh, it's interesting. It's very interesting. Um, I did not winter mulch. I want to put that in here too. Uh, winter mulching is something that I advocate in 7A. I do it often, almost always. I didn't get to do it this time, but that was part of the experiment. Okay, I do highly recommend winter mulching. If your tree dies back to the ground in 7A, for instance, uh, you will still be able to have the benefit of new shoots coming up from the roots. Uh, very seldom when you winter mulch will you lose your roots uh, in the ground. It's very seldom. It's almost never happened to me. Okay, uh, But you will see that a few did die all the way down to the root because I didn't winter mulch. I don't mulch in the summertime. I seldom mulch at all, which I know that's controversial. We talked about that before. And sometimes we'll talk about it again. Sometime we will. And it will be fun. We'll talk about it. Uh, but in the wintertime, I do mulch. Okay? So with that, I think I'm going to get outside here and start looking at the, the damage, the winter damage, the winter dieback that I received. Oh, and I have to put this in there. I put it in the other video. It was a perfect winter and a perfect experiment. It couldn't have been better because the temperatures never, ever went down below 10 degrees Fahrenheit here on my property. I know that for certain 
So we have a perfect, we couldn't have a, we couldn't choose a better reference point. We have a perfect scenario for a perfect experiment. 10 degrees Fahrenheit, no colder, okay? And we'll talk about that later. But to 10 degrees Fahrenheit, we will see what will happen if you don't protect your figs and what happens to certain varieties and in certain microclimates. With that, I think I'll get started and get outside and start looking at the winter dieback.